Hello and welcome to this special service for Holocaust Memorial Day. Holocaust Memorial Day itself is on Thursday the 27th of January, which was when the um, concentration camp Auschwitz-Birkenau was liberated by Russian forces. Over the years, Holocaust Memorial Day has taken on a greater significance as those who survived that terrible genocide have sadly passed on. But it has taken on newer meaning as we remember other genocides as well. Genocides in places like Bosnia and Rwanda and Darfur. So this is a special service, it's not our usual one. Um, at some point you may wish to pause this video and take a few moments um, to reflect and to gather your thoughts. Um, yeah. So we will have bits for you to join in with at home. All the words will be on the screen for you. There will be um, hymns for you to join in with as well. Um, so our opening hymn is Be Thou My Vision. As you can see, the words are on the screen for you. If you could say the words that are in bold. God of mercy, on this day, this one day, 
we come into your presence in darkness and in light aware of what has happened in days past in darkness and in light conscious of what people experience today in darkness and in light trusting that you will guide your world into every day to come in darkness and in light. So we come to our time of confession. Gracious God, on this one day, we call to mind other days, days of action and inaction, days of injury and loss. We are conscious of the darkest days and years when so many lives were cut short by hatred suffering which continues today we recognize the ways we have faltered in faith thinking less of others because they look different sound different feel in ways we will not imagine We confess these and all our sins this day. May God, who is rich in mercy, forgive us today and inspire us to live fully in every day to come in friendship and solidarity with all people and the whole of creation. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to show you a short video now made by um, the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust and it is the testimony of Rachel Levy who um, was um, held in Auschwitz. I'm Rachel and uh, also known as Rosina. Uh, that was my official name on passports but everybody knows me as Rachel. We had a pretty village, a river running through in the summer, we were swimming in the river and the winter was iced over and we would skate over it. Um, we were a happy village and very small, about 100 Jewish families, surrounded by mountains, because it was the Carpathian Mountains and lots of other people living around the mountains who used to come down to the village to buy things. They used to buy things from my mother's shop. Uh, we were uh, not allowed to do lots of things, but at the same time, they, want, they wanted the youth, the young men mainly, and eventually they took the young men out of the village. And my father was still a young man. He was included. Uh, they also restricted us from going to school. We had no schooling. Uh, we had uh, religious education, but no school. Uh, Jewish kids were not allowed to go to school. We were told, and this was not by radio. We didn't have radios. We didn't have any facilities. But by word of mouth, people traveling from one place to the other, that they said they were going to come to NTR village because lots of people had been taken to ghettos already. And our very good friends in the mountains said they would hide us, and they did hide us. That was the first time. And they left, the soldiers left, and they didn't find us. And we came back to the village, and life went on for a little while. But around Easter time or Pesach time, they came back. And although we were hidden again, the people had to give us up because they were threatened. They threatened they would be killed if they didn't get, give up the Jews. So they gave up. They said, you've got to come out of hiding. And the whole lot, all of us, came out to the village back. And from then on, they, we took, they took us away. We couldn't take it. We didn't take much with us. We couldn't. We walked to the ghetto. I don't know how far it was, I can't remember that. And the ghetto 
was full of people and there was no food, only what we carried with us and it was very difficult for all of us to go on the to the trucks and travel somewhere. Again, we didn't know where, at least children didn't know. The, the train was, the carriages were full to just standing only. There were no seats, there was no sanitation, there was no water. All the children were screaming and crying and we hung around my mother. Everybody was upset, but there was nothing the adults could do. They had no way of doing, helping us. I saw my brother and I was with him when they took us to somewhere which happened to be Auschwitz. We were taken into places where they shaved our heads. They took our clothes. They gave us other clothes, uniforms. And that was when they took us into the camps and we were put into a barrack with the tiered bust, the beds of boards, just boards. And that's where we were. I had people I knew. One of them was my mother's sister, a young woman. She was about 20, 21. And there were some cousins there and we did nothing, we just get taken out in the morning to be counted, get back to the camp, into the block, given soup and some brick-style bread, and that had to last. And that's all the food we got, this gritty, watery soup. We could see men in the next camp, but I didn't see my brother, never saw my brother. And then it was our turn and we were marched out of the camp and we didn't know where we were going. And it took days and nights and cold. It was autumn, it was cold. We were scantily dressed. We had no proper shoes or walking boots. We walked without food. Even the guards were starving by this time. I think they were being neglected. We marched for days and nights and days and nights. And then we found that we were in Belsen. And there I found my mother's sister. She was there, but she wasn't well by then. She was, um, she died and they threw her on the heap. Um, I was left very weak. We were all weak. We had nothing. We had no, the guards had given up. There was no kitchen. There was no, nobody there. Um, and we were just abandoned really. And then a week after my aunt died, she died a week before liberation. And she didn't see the soldiers coming in and we were liberated by the British. They looked after us, the nurses. Some people had to have their hair cut off again because we'd had grown hair by then. And, and some people, they just sat and de us. They used their combs and they used everything they could to save us having our hair cut. They were excellent looking after us and they got us to some sort of humans looking again like humans. Our Bible reading tonight is from Psalm 19. And again, if you could say the words that are in bold. 
the heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the ends of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. <clears throat> I want to read for you now a poem um, called Terezin by Michael Flack. That bit of filth in dirty walls and all around barbed wire and thirty thousand souls who sleep who once will wake and once will see their own blood spilled. I was once a little child, three years ago, that child who longed for other worlds, but now I am no more a child, for I have learned to hate. I am a grown-up person now. I have known fear. Bloody words and a dead day then. That's something different from boogeymen. But anyway, I still believe I only sleep today, that I'll wake up a child again and start to laugh and play. I'll go back to childhood sweet like a briar rose, like a bell which wakes us from a dream, like a mother with an ailing child, loves him with aching woman's love. How tragic then is youth which lives with enemies with gallows ropes, how tragic then for children on your lap to say, this for the good, that for the bad. Somewhere far away out there, childhood sweetly sleeps along that path among the trees that o'er that house, which once was my pride and joy. There my mother would give me birth into this world so I could weep. In the, can in the flame of candles by my bed I sleep, and once perhaps I'll understand that I was such a little thing, as little as this song. Those thirty thousand souls who sleep among the trees will wake, open an eye, and because they see a lot, they'll fall asleep again. I want to tell you about someone who died in the Holocaust. The numbers who died are mind-blowing. During the Nuremberg trials, the commandant of Auschwitz, uh, Rudolf Huss, um, openly declared that he thought 
two and a half million people had died under his un, at Auschwitz. When it came to his own trial, however, he, he downgraded that to one and a half million. One and a half million in one camp alone. How do you get your head around figures such as that? So I want to focus on just one person. And this person is Jane Hanning. And she was from Dumfrieshire. She was born in a farm in Dumfrieshire in 1897. And in 1932, she went to work with the Scottish uh, mission, for the Jewish Mission Committee in Hungary. In 1939, she was advised to come home to seek safety, but she refused and stayed there in Budapest looking after the Jewish women that she'd come to know and love. She is recognised as being one of the righteous among the nations. And what I want to read for you tonight now is uh, a piece of work by one of her biographers, Mary Miller. Um, it is a slightly fictionalised because we don't know exactly how she spent her last days. Mary Jane Hanning, the matron of the girls' home at the Scottish Mission School in Budapest, was arrested by the Gestapo on the 24th of April 1944 on a series of jumped up charges. She was kept, bre kept briefly at Fort Uta Prison, the city jail. At 5 a.m. on the 12th of May, dawn came late through the narrow window of the cell where the women lay trying to sleep. Crash! bang and a jangle of keys as the heavenly, heavy door swung open and at once the women were wide awake, anxiety forcing them bolt upright. Hanning, shouted two guards, hurry up, you're leaving. Jane and Francis, who had been sleeping side by side for a moment, stared wildly at each other. Confusion, terror, hope, then Jane and a few others stumbled to their feet. Your clothes, your things. A frantic search began, women pulling together the few garments that were known as Jane's. A scene flashed through Jane's mind of two nights before when she had made, up, made the women dress up in all the clothes they had and put on a fashion show, which she had compared in faultless German until they all rocked with laughter. But there weren't many clothes left. I gave my better things to Susie for court today. I've only this. Oh, the ham! Remembering Jane grabbed the piece of ham that Lois and so Sophia had managed to hand in for her yesterday. It had so preciously evoked the mission the school, the beloved girls for whom she cared. She tried to pull off a small piece and leave the rest with her cellmates, but Francis pushed it back at her. No, Jane, no, you might need it. Hurry up, hurry up, shouted the guards. Where's she going? demanded one of the other women. Ha, sneered the guard. She's going where she'll be happy because she loves Jews so much. She's going somewhere better. The women comforted each other. They know she's not like us. In the jumble of Jane's mind, a flash of hope, instantly followed by a wave of shame that she, she should even contemplate special treatment. It was all too quick. No time to think. A guard still shouting was dragging at her arm. 
no time to sit with Francis and read the Psalms, which had become their daily comfort. No time to pray except, oh God, oh God be with me, be with the women and keep them safe. They dragged her out. The door was slammed and locked. Devastated, Francis stared around the cell, then leapt into action. Jane, Jane, you've left your hairbrush. You were drying it at the window. No response from beyond the massive door. No return. Jane breathed the air on the short drive from the prison to the railway yard. She looked around. She saw the sky. Then, dear God, those look like cattle trucks. They shoved her in and the train pulled out for Auschwitz where of course she would not need her hairbrush. to speak you promise rest for weary feet God you care you carry those who carry pain bring bursting life to desert plains give dancing hearts to those in chains and the lonely a heart that loves those with no love at all hands to heal the hurt and the hungry you are the God who cares you stand with those who stand alone a shelter for those without a home Every tear that falls you know Cause God you care You have arms that reach the lost and the lonely A heart that loves those with no love at all Hands the heal the hurt and the hungry you are God who cares You have lavished us With your love So we must love have lavished us with your love so we must love you have lavished us with your love so we must love you have lavished us with your love so we must love give us all to Stand alone hearts to love those with no love at all Hands to heal the hurt and the hungry you are the God who cares God you
So we come to our time of prayer. When I say, may the words of our mouth and the desires of our hearts, can you say, please find favour find favor in your sight, O Lord. And the words are on the screen for you there. We remember this day all those who have suffered and been murdered as a result of genocide, hatred and abuse. May we honour their pain, hold them in our hearts and take action for a better future so that one day there will be no more genocide, no more war, no more hatred and division among us. May the words of our mouth and the desires of our hearts find favour in your sight, O Lord. We remember this day our Christian community. May we be enriched by its diversity, united in its faith and pained by its failures. On this day especially, we repent of our failures to eliminate anti-Semitism and prejudice within our communities. Help us to be faithful to our mission, to witness to a life of love, mercy and service in our world, combating anti-Semitism, intolerance and hatred in all its forms. Help us to be good neighbours to our Jewish communities and indeed to people of all faiths. May the words of our mouth and the desires of our hearts find favour in your sight, O Lord. We recognise and rejoice in our common humanity that unites us with our brothers and sisters past, present and to come. May we be ever mindful of the precious gift of life and be aware of the great dignity of our vocation to be life givers, helping the human family further in its journey into fullness in light of life in Christ. May the words of our mouth and the desires of our hearts find favour in your sight, O Lord. We recognise and rejoice in this earth that gives us life and sustenance. We acknowledge our interconnectedness with all living things and our dependence on the natural world around us. May we appreciate the mystery of life and learn to treat the earth on which we walk with reverence and respect. May the words of our mouth and the desires of our hearts find favour in your sight, O Lord. Let us for a moment feel the suffering and pain that we humans have, have and still inflict on one another. The abuse and disrespect that we have for the natural world Let us feel too the goodness and energy of all those who are working for its healing and the overcoming of divisions among people. Let us send out our own loving energy and healing to them as we pray. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord uncover his faith to you and bring you his peace. 
Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As we go from this place of prayer into a world of challenge and change, we remember the pain of the past. As we obey God's commandments and follow Christ's way, we recognise life's need for love. As we seek the truth and glimpse God in all peoples and all places, we go to make the world a home for everyone. Amen. May we go in peace, holding the memory of others in our hearts, firm in the knowledge of the grace, hope and love of God. Amen. And I wish to show you now a video from the Holocaust Memorial um, Trust um, examining the stages we go through before we get to a genocide. Um, we have to remember that that the Holocaust didn't start with Auschwitz. It started much smaller. And we need to be aware and alert to what is happening in our world today. So I hope you have found this service not enjoyable but useful. Um, when we forget the past we repeat its mistakes. I am going to Auschwitz um, later this year with college um, and I'm thinking about making a video diary of my experiences there and how I process that. 
if that's something that you are interested in, um, please do leave comments or get in touch um, and we'll see how that goes. Thank you to the Council of Christians and Jews for providing um, the shape of our um, service this evening and thank you to the Holocaust Memorial Day Trust for kindly letting us um, use their videos as part of this service. If you wish to attend an in-person Holocaust Memorial Day service here in Darlington, um, there is one on Thursday, that's a, uh, it's on, actually on Holocaust Memorial Day the 27th at 7 o'clock at Q, um, QE College. Um, uh, that's the one just around the corner from Holy Trinity Church and that will be led by our Archdeacon uh, Rick Simpson. I hope that you have a good week. I hope that you have a safe week and that you're able to join us again soon.